for in Article 3. And this is to see if the school district will vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton School Board and the Seacoast Educational Association, otherwise known as SEA, covering the four-year period from July 1st, 2016 to June 30th, 2020, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels. And you do see the list down there from 2016 to 2017, 239,021 dollars. 2017 to 2018, 254,533 dollars. 2018 to 2019, 252,502 dollars. 2019 to 2020, 250,748 dollars. further raise and appropriate the sum of $239,021 for the 2016 to 17 fiscal year, such sum representing the additional cost attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at current staffing levels in accordance with the most recent collective bargaining agreement. Majority vote required on this. Um, do I have a motion on I'll, this? I'll move that. Okay, Steve and Sunny. Any discussion? Tim? This was another item we discussed in our little uh, <coughs> session, and um, I wanted to get it out in public that this, uh, in fact, the day we met was the day after the omnibus ran over the Obamacare Cadillac tax, right? right? But yet it's still an issue because that delayed the Obamacare Cadillac tax, a 40% tax surcharge, some call it, until January 1, 2020. This agreement goes to June 30th, 2020. So I'll give you this opportunity, as I know you want to talk about how you spared the town from having to absorb this uh, onious uh, tax. So Clearly, at the, at the negotiating table, the, the most important topic for the board's negotiating team was to address the Cadillac tax, the excise tax built into the Affordable Care Act. And remember that even though something may take effect from a federal level on January 1, our teacher contracts run, our school year runs, our fiscal year runs July previous to June. So any change that you need to affect for January 1 really must be in place through the open enrollment period that is June leading up to July 1st. And so the 1920 school year is still in play and will still be impacted by this unless legislation changes something again. But the negotiated agreement did identify one thing first, that there would be a committee established with equal representation from the boards and from the union and that that committee would meet on an annual basis moving forward to consider and explore all alternatives and options to find lower cost plans and avoid the impact of a Cadillac tax, and that they would make those recommendations each year so that we could consider changes to our plans, changes to our carrier, among other things, and that in the absence of agreement or in any situation where the coverages that we're talking about hit a point where the Affordable Care Act was applied and there was an excise tax because the plans were still high cost plans by definition, the teachers would bear the cost of that essential 40% excise on the overage, not the taxpayer. Essentially, the district's contribution would be decreased by that amount and the employees increased by that amount and they would make the commitment to either make the change to a lower cost plan or pay that excise tax so that the taxpayers won't. So that commitment is there. It will it will be in place through 18. It will be in place through January of 20 because the contract uh, extends to June of 20. Beyond that, <clears throat> there's another committee that will meet to talk about their extracurricular stipends. Uh, there were some changes made to the health, in health insurance to save about 20 grand a year. Uh, but the biggest issue was that. And for that, the scale itself will move by half a percent. And those that are on the scale will move a step. Those that are off the scale, we'll see off the top step, we'll see a 1.75% increase in each of the four years of the deal. So, Paul, I congratulate you on being proactive in addressing 
this uh, oppressive tax under Obamacare and sparing the taxpayers from yet another hidden tax, <laughs> making that tax fall where it belongs, which is the people that advocated Obamacare. So I thank you for your diligent work once again. I'm done, Madam Chair. Thank you. Michael? Uh, could you tell us for the public's benefit what the percent increase is for the teachers? And you said something about 1.5 for people who want going through the steps. Can you explain that again clearly? Yep. If you're off the top, it's a 12-step scale. So if you have either started with Hampton School and continued for 12 or more years, or if you joined us with experience and started somewhere in the grid and have progressed to step 12, once you are at the top step or in your years thereafter, you simply will advance 1.75, 1.75% in each of the four years. If you happen to be a newer teacher, meaning that you've come in with no experience and you're at the beginning of the scale on step one, or you are at any point between one and 12, the scale's going to move by half of 1%, and you get to move up a step. That step is it's an average 3.75% in the grid. So, um, so it's a, it's a, there's a compounding there. It'll be a little better than a 4% increase on, uh, on those that are within the grid on average. On average, on average it's about a 2.4. It's a 2.4% average increase uh, if you blend them all together. It's, yeah, I think that's a great, uh, superintendent suggests I remind you that two-thirds of our staff are at step 12 or beyond. So it's a smaller percentage for sure, about a third that are in the grid getting that bigger bump. And that's part of what the teachers have negotiated for decades to build that scale and to reward with those increases their learning and growing teachers. Two-thirds or more, almost 70% of ours are in the category of off the top. So they'll be getting the 1.75%. Very good. Very good. Very good. Are we ready for a vote? Yes. Yeah, okay. Indeed. All those in favor? Unanimous. Got that unanimous?